This thing here, no, it's not a periscope from a submarine, although it very well could be. This is the Hayward Skimmer. This is the magical box that you put in your pool that is supposed to get rid of all your bugs, debris, junk, and everything so much easier and make your life more enjoyable. Guaranteed happiness. I think I saw it somewhere on the box. If you're not familiar with what a skimmer is and you're wondering why in the world we're actually doing this, why are we buying this? A skimmer is a device that changes where your pool filter draws in the water to filter it from below the surface at some little portholes to a box that can reside above the surface and below and get things off the top of the water. It kind of skims the top of the surface. What this allows you to do is to draw in the suction from your pool into this box and in here there is a little basket you put in with a mesh or a filter basket of sort and it collects large debris. This is supposed to save you a ton of time on pool maintenance, it's supposed to keep your pool cleaner, be a more enjoyable process overall and is one thing you can add to your pool to reduce the amount of work you have to do to maintain and keep your pool looking great. At least that's how it's advertised and that's why we bought it but we won't know until we put this in. So let's go ahead and go over the steps on installing this and actually put it on the pool. There are a lot of different components in the box if you get this exact same kit, but what we're going to start off with are four main things. You have the rectangle cutout. This is what goes inside the pool. You have the gasket itself. You have your hardware bag, the screws you use to attach everything to. And then, of course, you have the actual skimmer housing itself. This is the big behemoth box of magic that goes on the outside of your pool. I'm no skimmerologist, but from what I have read and understand, the ideal water level for your skimmer is in the middle. You don't want it below the skimmer. It won't work. You don't want it above the skimmer. It'll pour out the back. You want it somewhere in the middle. I've looked at our pool and we don't have a ton of wiggle room as far as the water level and how far up I can take the skimmer. What this is probably going to do is lower our maximum water height a little bit from where we like to have it or where the pool can absolutely be, but it's going to prevent me from doing the really risky thing of installing my gasket right at the seam of the top of our pool. I would much rather lose an inch or so maybe of pool water and not destroy the pool. So your mileage may vary depending on the design of your pool, the style, the height and everything. Just know we're trying to get this mounted as high as possible so we can retain the water depth as deep as possible. All right, let's talk about location. The ideal location for a skimmer is downwind where your prevailing winds blow that way, put it down there. However, that's going to directly conflict with our pool deck we're going to build. So I can't put it there. What I'm going to do instead is put it right here probably in that area right where the default intake or return i don't the manual says it's weird where the water comes out of the pool and goes to the filter in that area i thought about putting it on that end of the pool but that's going to extend the lengths and piping i needed for filtration and then i also didn't want to really create any problems my mindset says sam the people who designed the pool probably know best they have it going into the pool there after it's being filtered they have it coming out of the pool here to be filtered. Don't try and get smart. Don't deviate from that too much. Just put it here. It's not gonna be in the way of that new pool deck you gotta build. It should be fine, and it won't make you, hopefully, have to go buy a whole bunch of material from the store to plumb this, pipe it back up together, and so that you and your family can enjoy the pool again. So, right here it is. All right, guys, you are currently in the pool. Hopefully the water is fine, not too cold for you. I'm going to try and do this from the outside as much as possible, but I have Elijah, my son in here, and he is helping as needed in the water arena. So we're gonna put this right here, right up as close to the top of the seam as we can get without interfering with it. Earlier I talked about we wished it could be higher for best water location, but that would have put it somewhere up in this area, and that's just ludicrous land. So we're gonna put it right here but it right up to the bottom where this gray seam overlaps and attaches to the blue, and we should be good there. Out of the pool, guys. Sorry, I'm actually gonna do this from the outside. I had you guys in the pool a second ago, but I think I'll be able to do this fine right here. 
because this seam matches the inside I should be good just doing the outline and cutting it from the outside we have our traced our outline this is what we need to cut out and the thing for me to remember I'm cutting on the outside of this sharpie line because I traced it from the inside of that piece I'm going to very very carefully use my razor blade make my cuts and hope and pray I don't mess things up That was incredibly way too easy to do. I've seen some other people say these liners are super, super tough. Maybe it's because I had a brand new knife blade in there, but that was really easy. So be very, very careful. Now we're gonna take our gasket. It does open up this way. We're going to fish it in here, in and around, and see that it works perfectly, covers everything, and nothing is wrong. Awesome, wonderful. The next thing to do is poke yourself some pilot holes in these so you can more easily push the screws through that they give you. These are some nice thick stainless steel screws, but they're also not pointed on the ends, so they're not gonna be self-piercing through these. Another thing to note is that the number of holes in this gasket do not correlate with the number of holes in your plate. So if you need to, use a Sharpie, make you some dots. You've got three on the top, and the bottom two on the left and the right don't poke unnecessary holes if you can help it so let's go ahead and mark those with the sharpie i'm gonna use my knife poke tiny little starter holes and then we'll start screwing this thing together from the inside towards the out I need you to push the screwdriver and turn it, please. Is it? Yep. Oh my gosh, what is that? <laughs> it's a cicada. That's one of those bugs that tells you it's super hot. Yeah. Alright, that's good. You got the screwdriver? Keep a hold of it. Okay. Bottom left. Alright. Now let's do this one. There we go. There we go. Okay. All right. Two more. There we go. I'm having a heavy push. All right. Our gasket's in place. Our inner piece is on. All of the screws have been pushed through. The next thing to do is put this on, but do not forget this step. Put your flapper in first. Otherwise, you will not get this in there. So make sure your flapper gets installed. Then you put it together. Tighten it down by hand with a screwdriver. Don't use a drill, don't use a power tool. You don't want to strip out the plastic. Do it by hand so you know how far you're going.
it's the next day we have the skimmer all tightened down here we splash some water around it and it looks like we're good no water leaks what we're going to be doing next is working on plumbing the skimmer up ultimately attaching it to the pump but also keeping our existing outlets or inlets remember they call it something weird in the manual the other hoses put those into play as well and still add control whether or not we choose to use them I'm All right guys, I've got all my stuff together. I have my ducks in a row, and so let me tell you who's who in the game of pool retrofitology. So on the skimmer itself, I threaded in an inch and a half PVC to male thread adapter. On the bottom of it, this inch and a half shutoff valve is gonna slip right in and get glued into place. The other side, I have a short section of inch and a half PVC glued in here. From there, it's going to attach to a sanitary T. What this T is going to allow me to do is put some of these slip fit female adapters. One goes here, one goes on the bottom, because what that then lets me do is put these nice little adapters you can buy from inch and a half NPT pipe thread to the 40 millimeter Intex hose. They screw right in here on the left and on the bottom. And that's going to allow me to take my existing return lines, attach it right here, and then this one will go from all of this straight down to the filter. I'm not going to do a full PVC conversion. I looked at it, I kind of weighed the pros and cons, and this is what I chose. Obviously, that's what I'm showing you guys. But this allows me to use very minimal parts for this conversion. So as far as we're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six different things plus the two fittings that come as a kit that's not bad so this is what i'm going to be doing yes we're still using the flex hose but that's okay it should do fine it was doing great and i don't think there's any problems otherwise usually when people convert their intex pools to pvc the rigid pvc they're looking for something that's more robust if you hit it with a string trimmer or if it gets knocked around or beat around we don't really have that problem because all this stuff is here and while it may at first look like it's right front up and center this is an area that we're not going to get to we have our mini split system our propane tanks for our fireplace in the house and then this kind of makes of a utilitarian area that we don't have a lot of foot traffic with so i think this is going to work good for us that being said let's take all of our parts let's glue what needs to be glued let's teflon tape what needs to be tefloned and put this thing back together Hose adapter on the right, hose adapter on the bottom, small little piece of inch and a half PVC for the top. So this is everything glued together except for this one piece. This is going to go into this guy that's already been Teflon taped and screwed into the skimmer. Glue this up, and then the gray adapters go on the left side, the bottom side, and we're ready to hook things back up. It's really, really quick and easy to do. Teflon tape is not required on these per se because your O-ring is really what should be doing all of the sealing, but hey, I've got it. It's not gonna hurt anything, so I added it into this. I take it back. Teflon tape, you got to do it because otherwise it doesn't go far enough for the O-ring to seat in. I mean, maybe if you're stronger than me, but let's not be crazy. Guys, our hard plumbing is all done. Next thing to do is put the original hose apparatus and shutoff valve back in place. Again, something that we're choosing to do. I also see a lot of other people do it too, so I'm just kind of playing copycat. What I'm going to do is try and route this a little more neatly and probably take some zip ties and zip tie it to one of the pool legs just to make things a little bit cleaner i've always hated how it was just literally flopping around down here
That sweet sound right there is as good as an ice cream truck to our two boys. When they hear the water hose running, they probably are going to know that dad is done messing with the pool. It's filling back up, and that means they can get in and help it fill up somehow by being inside playing. I think that's all right, though. Let's go ahead and let it fill up, get back up to the proper level. Then we'll get that skimmer going, see it in action, and hey, enjoy all the bugs being pulled into their basket of oblivion and not just floating around there for us to clean up the next day. The pool is all filled up, but right now there's no bugs or anything in it because we cleaned it while we were working on this. So I want to let it sit overnight. Usually by the mornings, we wake up to a lot of June beetles and bugs and people just kind of hanging out that we didn't invite to swim. So let's see how it does. Tomorrow, let's see how many bugs are on the surface, but see how many are inside that skimmer box. See you then. So it's the next morning and as you guys see there we did catch a handful of bugs and stuff now two things one the pump did not run all night it was set to automatically run its normal cycle and it turned off sometime in the middle of the night also we had a pretty big thunderstorm come through which to add those two together and i'm not upset that there is right at the same number of bugs in the skimmer box as there is floating in the pool that's okay Obviously the skimmer does work. There are bugs in there. As I turn the valves on the extra little inlets over here and reduce the water flow, I can tell a difference. So it is doing its job. So it's definitely safe to say this is not a 100% foolproof item. This will not get rid of all your bugs, probably. But you know what? It does make a big difference on how many are in the pool, but also it seems to not starve the filter for water flow. There is a noticeable difference in the output over there out of the filter going back into the pool as far as water flow water volume pressure and everything it's a lot stronger now with the hayward skimmer installed so i definitely think that the default manufacturer setup is kind of restrictive on your water flow at least that's my opinion all in all it was an easy thing to install it is catching some bugs so it's doing the job and you know what it adds that little bit more ability for filtration and that to me is a win Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. You enjoyed getting to see some more pool stuff. If you like this, stick around because the next project for us on our channel with our swimming pool will be replacing Mr. Sketchy the ladder with a custom pool deck right here. Going from here, attaching to the deck on the back of our home and making a much more safe and secure setup. Either way, thanks for watching. Leave us a comment down below if you have any questions or want to. And otherwise, take care. We'll see you next time on the homestead.